Hello and welcome along to another managerial special from the Honest Football Podcast. The first one technically of the off-season, despite the fact the playoffs haven't actually started yet. And we are back to talk about a permanent appointment at Preston North End. So Frankie McAvoy, the man who took over as interim when Alex Leon was sacked in March, has done a good job and has now been appointed the permanent manager, or head coach, should we say. That's something we'll come to later on. I'm joined by Charlie as always, and we're going to talk through the ins and outs and what we think of it. And we'll try and give a balanced debate as always. So, Charlie, I think we've got to start with the fact that this probably isn't a big surprise, is it? Because he's been they've been linked with other names, particularly former players like Gareth Ainsworth, who we've popped up a couple of times. But in the pandemic, a cheaper option, one who's done well in his interim spell. It can't be a shock that he's been given a chance at the job. No, no, I thought a lot of the, when the next time we were going to do this discussion would be for someone like Gareth Ainsworth or something like that. But actually, Frankie McAvoy's hit form at the right time if you want to keep a job. You know, four wins in the last four. We mentioned about players, about, you know, hitting form at the right time, getting a contract for next year. And I think, I suppose, it works as a manager. He's only lost one game in his eight games. You can't be fairer than that. The thing is, I suppose, Preston were very inconsistent. And that was something that we joked about. But it was a fair assessment, I would say. And I'm sure yeah. a lot of Preston fans would agree with that. But he has brought an element of consistency to them. Five wins and two draws out of eight. You can't really argue with that. And he's definitely shored them up defensively, particularly those first two draws when he first took over against some big teams as well. You know, I I think whatever we'll talk about, you know, Alex in a bit necessarily, but Preston might have crumbled in those situations. So he's obviously done something defensively and he shored them up in that way. There's still a few issues I'm sure we'll talk about. But for me, it did seem a bit of a no-brainer. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there for financial reasons as well. You're getting what seems like to be a good quality coach and manager for maybe uh, less, you know, a fraction of the price of what you pay for some other managers, to be fair. Yeah, and I think we, we've got to talk about those eight games he was in charge. I think the thing that probably impressed me the most, and we'll try to be balanced with this, is that after getting beaten 5-0 by Brentford, their reaction is to only concede one goal in five games, which is exceptional. However, I want to give the caveat to that in these eight games, which you mentioned those four wins at the end. Three of them were against Coventry and Forest, who had nothing to play for and away from home where Preston had been largely good under Alex Neal, and at home to a Derby side in free fall. At the risk of playing devil's advocate, is it a great reaction to the Brentford defeat, or is it the right fixtures at the right time for him? I think, though, I, I'd agree with you on that, but the fact they've been so good defensively would suggest mm. it's a bit more than just the right fixtures, because I think you can play badly still against poorer teams, and especially, I suppose, at that point, Derby obviously still had loads to play for, albeit you know they were in woeful form. But I, I still think defensive. If the first thing to go for me, I think if if you're we you mentioned being on holiday and that kind of thing, you know, I think the first thing that normally goes is your defensive stoutness and and your defensive display. So the fact they may retain that after a bit of a, a bit of a thumping, and it is a very Preston esque thumping. If I'm being brutally honest, out of nowhere just getting beaten five nil. So and it's not a disparaging thing, but that's just sort of been the story of their season really. But for me, the fact that he, there there was a defensive, he's been working on that. He must have been considering their their defensive displays before that. I agree with you. The fixtures have been very kind. But I still think he must have inspired something in that squad. And let's be brutally honest, it was more or less a new squad from January, which is probably something we'll talk about in a bit when we talk about transfers and stuff. But yeah, for me, I think it was a bit more, I would go a bit more towards there might be something in his managerial style. Because I think, as I say, if you were going to throw the towel in, your defence would be the first one that probably goes, to be brutally honest. No, I think that's a fair assessment. And I think the other thing before we move on to potentially the off-the-pitch stuff in the future is we talked about the sides that didn't have anything to play for at the end of the season. And I think probably alongside the likes of Luton and QPR, McAvoy's Preston were one of the few that didn't go to the beach, that didn't go on holiday, that didn't drop off, as you said, defensively. They were probably better than ever at the end. And does that say something about his character that possibly lets you understand why the board have gone for him? Yeah, I think so. And, and, and I think you're talking about, uh, you know, obviously his career, the way he's gone with it, you know, he wasn't a professional footballer, but I think there's some value in that. And sense, you know, look at, you know, there's massive examples, like Brendan Rodgers, people like that. But what I mean is, is that, actually spent longer in the game, worked as academy director. He's had various levels, you know, he's been in various positions in a football club, not all at the same one, but still. And I think that gives you a good ground and it gives you a good foundation. And you can relate to players of different ages and different backgrounds in, in different ways. You, you know how to deal with the younger lads in the squad. You also know how to do the experienced pros because you've been the first team, you know, coach or whatever prior to that. Do you know what I mean? So I think it gives you a bigger repertoire of how to manage players and Maybe that Preston squad needed a bit of that and it had got a bit stale for them. So, yeah, I think you have to congratulate him for not going on holiday. And out of all the teams who, in that middle part of the league that I thought might have thrown it in, it probably was it was Preston. So, they've been a pleasant surprise for me. I hope it doesn't go. I'm talking about a different club very, very quickly in terms of the way Bradford went because they had this similar start with the two lads there, come through the youth system as coaches. You've got to give these lads time, which I'm sure something we'll talk about in a bit. 
No, I completely agree. And I guess going to the statement and the things that are happening in the club at the same time, the two questions I wanted to ask you, we'll get the first one. You mentioned that he's not played professionally and that he's obviously worked in different roles in football. So going alongside his appointment of head coach, one of probably the best decisions to come with it is appoint a club legend who's retiring to the coaching staff, who's played 300 games for the club and over 600 professionally. So Paul Gallagher going in as a coach, no matter what his influence is to start with, it's got to be a bit of a masterstroke, hasn't it? Oh, definitely in that sense. And I, and I think for me, you know, you talk about different ends of the spectrum, you know, obviously McAvoy's a bit older. I know that we said he's had different roles in the club, but you're talking about someone who's just come off the pitch. And I think that that's, um, as a player, sometimes it's nice to see that. I know it's hard sometimes if you've played with them, but also on the flip side of that, it's, it's nice to know someone who understands and relates. And if you're trying to convey a point across in a coaching session or something like that, it's not like, oh, you know, you retired 20 years ago, the game's very different. So I think there's a nice balance there of experience of someone who's played in the game, someone who's had a very long coaching career. You've got quite a lot going on there in a good way. And I think it gives you, as I say, I keep using the word, but gives you a, a, a big repertoire of how to cope with different situations within a football club. So rather than a one size fits all approach, you've got different um, ways of dealing with different people, which I think for me, and nowadays, particularly when you're talking about a squad that's been overhauled like it has, a lot of it is about player management and man management in that sense. And, and I think probably the other thing that maybe gets overlooked is the mentality in a club, even from non-league dressing rooms, is stepping up from a number two. The thing that's often said is, can he go from being that good cop with the players to being the bad cop as such? And having Paul Gallagher there, who's close to the squad, who knows all the lads, who can potentially take on the role that he had previously and be that good cop with the players... Does that allow him to then perhaps be a more authoritative manager? Oh, definitely. I think, you know, that going into personal things, I, you know, I've done a little bit of management, but a lot of coaching. I've much preferred that coaching role because you are the link between the two. You know, I'm not saying you can shirk responsibility if someone's unhappy about being dropped or anything like that, but you can try and soften that a bit. Yeah. And, and generally, and this is not in a disrespectful way, I think players probably sometimes prefer the coach to the manager. Yeah. You, can, you can relate to You probably have a bit more contact time with them for, as well. But then on the flip side of that, and, you know, just through reading, you know, and listening to interviews of other managers and stuff, you need that distance between you. And I think if you've got someone in between there, that helps you keep in contact and know what's going on and getting a feel of what's going on on the ground on a daily basis. But also that air of authority that you can still impart what you want to do, but in a professional way without upsetting your old mate. I think if you're going for like Paul Gallagher, who was then became the manager, completely different kettle of fish. I think that that role in between is a huge, huge difference. And I think it's a positive one personally. I completely agree. I guess I want to play the flip side of it. We try to have the balance debate. So McAvoy's been with Alex Neil for eight years. Aside from Paul Gallagher, who was a player at Preston, most of the coaching team has remained the same and the behind the scenes team. Is there a risk there is going to be no difference to what would have happened long term with Alex Neal because it's largely Alex Neal's team and a team of people? McAvoy's not been a professional footballer. He spent most of his career working with Alex Neal. Is there going to be that much of a difference in simple terms? Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's, it's a huge risk. And if you look at Preston last year, they lost 21 games. The next highest loss of games was Bristol City in 19th on 25. Like, So you're talking about, I know they won 18, so a bit more. But you're talking about a very gung ho team. Let's be brutally honest. One eighteen, only drawn seven. And then look at the few. I'm not going to bore you with the details. But if you look around the teams in and around them in that league, the results are all over the shop in terms of win, loss, draw. So if you're getting more of that, that's never going to be sustainable. I would like to think he would be wise enough to know. Right, here's the good things Alex Neil did. But here's my style. And I think we've seen a tiny bit of that in terms of maybe the defensiveness has shored up. But when the pressure's on, you do go back to your default, and the default has been 18 wins, seven draws, 21 losses. I don't know if that's sustainable. As I say, you know, they're not going to get relegated on that kind of numbers, but you're certainly going to be nowhere near promotion. And I feel like, I'm not just saying this to appease the fans, I feel like a club like Preston should be in and around the playoffs. In terms of the size of the club, fan base, history and all of that kind of thing, if you put all that together, I think they probably deserve a little bit better than mid-table, but it's when the pressure hits. I think that's the thing is, where do you go then? Hopefully, he's a bit older, a bit more experienced, you know, in terms of being in and around football clubs. You'd like to think he could still cope with his own style but it is like, this is what Alex Neal did in this situation. And as great as that being, it didn't necessarily work for them in getting them near the playoffs this year. So when the pressure's on, we'll see what he's made of, I think. And before we get on to what we think is going to happen in the future, we have got to mention the head coach role, the change of direction that so many clubs are taking these days. And Preston, the latest one, which is weird given the fact the head of recruitment left in the middle of the January transfer window. But we've got a position where he's the head coach, which makes you think he's not going to have the final say or a full say in a transfer window. You've talked about January. It was probably the biggest section of our January transfer review off the championship. They sold nearly half of their first 11 or loaned out nearly first half of their first 11 in the mid-season transfer window. Now, 
that's not sustainable. We said at the time it was going to lead to more inconsistency. And now they're going to have quite a small squad because all of those loanies will have returned. So what do you see for the summer? Is that potentially a worry that they're getting him as a cheap option and then we'll throw him under the bus if the recruitment doesn't work out? Yeah, also maybe not, I'm not saying he is like this, but someone who's just happy to be there. It's his first you know, managerial job, bit of a yes man. And that's not necessarily given, like you say, the, the recruitment they've done so far, what you'd want. I think you need someone in there. And maybe, maybe with Alex Neil, maybe that's slightly, I, I, would, I would never know what conversations he had, but maybe that's part of the issue is the fact that he's, he's, he strikes me as a strong-willed manager and he wasn't happy with that. I think it proved the second half of the season that throwing a squad just together in, in you know, three weeks is not, it's not going to work at championship level. If you try and do that over the summer, I think it's even harder because then you, you're talking about, you know, trying to bed all of them in, get rid of players who maybe are not quite good enough, getting those other ones. And then trying to do that in your first job and then being told, actually, you know, he should be playing, he should be playing, he should be playing by someone else. As I say, that's then where do you go, you go from there? That pressure hits on him then. Does he go back to what they did before, which led them to mid-table? Or is he going to be strong enough? If he's strong enough, I don't know if whoever he stays there. I know it sounds awful, but, you know, if, this, if, this, if that's the way they're recruiting in January, I can't see why... The method is going to be different in the summer. If he puts his foot down and says, no, I'm not having this, I can't imagine that they're just going to say, oh, yeah, no, fair enough. I understand. You're correct. You know, I hope for Preston's sake, they've learned from January, but we'll only know by the end of August, to be brutally honest, whether that's the case. No, I completely agree. But there is one more key man in this, and the one that you'll probably be the least aware of, which in March, Preston's first step after the head of recruitment leaving was to point a new senior recruitment analyst. These are the types of roles that exist in football these days. But the man they appointed was a man called James Beat, who came from Barnsley. Now, Barnsley's recruitment in January and last summer, and probably the year or two before that, replacing a lot of the stars they were selling, has been probably nothing short of exceptional, I think it would be fair to say. So if that man's given a bit of a say, and Frankie McAvoy, as we say, the, the positive side of it, he's got a chance to build his own squad now. They're going to need 10 signings or so to fill the squad. Could it be a blessing in disguise if the right people are then in the recruitment? It's different, though, because I think different clubs, it, it's, the, it's the ethos and the culture of the club. I think Barnsley, for all of their faults last year in terms of, you know, being in and around the relegation zone, obviously they've been fantastic this year. There's a certain brand of football, and I think that you can recruit based around that. And it's a bit more attractive. I'm not saying anything against Alex Neal. He's very successful at what he does. But, you know, we've spoken to people like Mickey Spillane, people like that who played under him. And it's, it's a certain brand of football that is effective. That's not necessarily the most enjoyable. But what I'm trying to get at is is if you're talking about recruitment, you need to buy into that culture and that style and everyone needs to be pulling in that same direction. How's that style going to work with a man who'd come from a club where, let's you know, be honest, the football was probably played a bit more fluently on the floor and a bit more attacking prowess. Do you know what I mean? So I suppose it's a clash of styles. That can sometimes lead to, you know, a, great, a good balance and you end up with both and actually a very successful team. But again, it's that, it's that possible conflict that you just have to manage. So I think on paper, it's a good appointment. I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what... Frankie McAvoy's style really is and how that would marry up with James Beat, as you say. And I guess we can't put it off any longer. We've got the chance to make ourselves look like idiots for the first time next season, three months before it starts. What do we think of this appointment and Preston next season? Because as a head coach, he's not got experience. This could go either way, as we know. But what do you see happening next season? Where do you see Preston being? And do you think Frankie McAvoy could be the right man for the job? Honestly, I, I think it'll be more of the same in terms of position. I think I don't see the results being as erratic as they were last year because I think we've spoken heavily about maybe something that he probably values is a defensive display. So that's good. The recruitment maybe is obviously something we've spoken about and possibly up front. I think it would be more mid-table mediocrity and I think that's because he's a safe bet. He'll keep you there because he's, he's in that vein of Alex Neal and what he's done and all of that. I can't see, even with this amazing, you know, recruitment that they've talked about with James Beaton, given the the meddling, potentially, potential meddling, sorry, for legal reasons, of uh, the <laughs> people upstairs. I, I think it's just too much, too many, too many cooks, or whatever the phrase is. So they're not going to get relegated. I, I think they're, 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 they've got too many players there. Well, I know you're talking about to change the squad, but there's still too many good players there. We're looking at teams that come from League One and stuff like that. I think they'll be fine. I don't see many in the playoffs. I think they'll be slightly better defensively, but I still can't see anything but mid-table mediocrity for me, unfortunately. Yeah, I do agree to an extent. I think the problem with this job for Frankie McAvoy is because of the overhaul that's going to be needed in the squad this year, the job is going to take two seasons for whoever mm. is doing it. And my worry is if Frankie McAvoy next season, let's say finishes comfortably between, let's say, 10 and 10th and 12th, I would say if he recruits a good young squad and is building them into some sort of familiar philosophy, that's probably a good season. But is it going to be seen as a good season if it's Frankie McAvoy, who's 
seen by some fans you've seen on social media as the cheaper option. They wish him well, but there's an expectation there that he possibly isn't going to be back for in the recruitment market. And if he's not, there could be a little bit of an issue there. I think if he's given the two years, I actually think some of the performances are a really good sign. I think the first season is probably going to be more of, as you say, having that solid defensive base. And we might see them, ironically, given last season, being a little bit short of goals to start with while they build mm. from the back and build a foundation. But if he's given two years and he's backed well with recruitment, I think he will do well at this club. And I think potentially the year after next, they could be challenging for the playoffs. My worry is in a championship, most managers don't get that time. So we'll wait and see what happens on that front. Uh, so next season, Charlie's going for mid-table mediocrity. I'm going for lower top half. But I think we're both saying he needs to be backed in the window and given time. And they're two things that don't always come in the championship. But let us know what you think if you're a Preston fan down in the comments below. Are you happy to see Frankie McAvoy in? And what have you made of his interim spell so far? If you did enjoy the episode, please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for regular content from the podcast. We'll have our championship playoff predictions this weekend. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Thank you to Charlie for joining me as always. You can follow us on Twitter at HonestFootball3. And hopefully we'll see you next time.